Hello and welcome to Ink Peace, Episode 9, The Inkening. In this video I'll be doing some full colour portraits of the player characters from the Stravagante podcast, link below. There will be some spoilers, so if you haven't already, give the podcast a listen before you watch the rest of this video. I'm starting with Corey's character, the human knight, Prince Fruna. When Corey sent me his concept for this character, I was immediately super excited. Prince and his backstory are inspired by a Romanian folktale, sometimes called The Girl Who Pretended to Be a Boy. Now, antiquated title aside, the fairy tale is remarkably trans-affirming. I'll include a link to one of the translations I found in the video description. Corey and I discussed ahead of the game how much of the folktale we wanted to incorporate into Fruna's story. We agreed that the moment where, as Corey put it, the prince gets free magical top surgery from a backfiring curse should come up during play somehow. I'm really glad we were able to include Prince's magical transition in the show, and I'll be employing some fancy video editing wizardry to represent it in this portrait. The outfit and colour scheme I've used for Prince are from a character sketch that Corey sent me. Like many artists, I have a difficult time drawing horses. I wanted to still include Prince's trusty magical horse companion Moonbeam somehow, and I remember that one of Prince's flubs is drawing. I imagine that after their adventure, Prince wanted to make something special for Moonbeam, and he started practicing his art skills so he can draw a portrait of him. As you can see, he is very proud of it. I really enjoy Prince, and I love the kind of air-headed but gold-hearted himbo energy that Corey brings to the character. I cannot wait to see what he gets up to next. Next, we have Thimble's character, the harpy minstrel Morningstar. Of the three players, Thimble is the one I've spent most hours gaming with. She's always a joy to have as part of a game group, her characters are always lovely, and Morningstar is no exception. I love that Thimble decided to model her harpy's look on the Hawaiian Iivi bird or Scarlet Honeycreeper, which, as she mentioned on the show, is unfortunately in danger of going extinct. It has beautiful plumage, which I was eager to represent in all its crimson and black splendour. Something I knew I wanted to include, and which is missing from the original character art, is a reference to the Eevee's iconic long drooping beak.
As you can see, I extended the feather in her hat so that it echoes the beak's shape. For this portrait, I also added some elements from a character sketch that Thimble sent me, which included a snazzy satchel with a harlequin style pattern on it, which I decided to also apply to her hat. I think now Morningstar looks suitably extravagant. I loved how Thimble gave Morningstar a slightly nervous energy. She only recently graduated as a storyteller, after all. But with the odd glimpse of the self-assured and charismatic performer I am confident she will become. Last, but certainly not least, is Adelina's character, the fairy mage, Song. When Adelina first mentioned to me that Song would have pointy teeth, my mind immediately conjured images of a wild, feral little fairy zooming around trying to bite people. While I think there's certainly still potential for that to happen, I really like how much of her own sunny, encouraging personality Adelina put into song. Song's appearance also reminded me immediately of the butterfly from The Last Unicorn, and I feel she has some of that flightiness to her character too. Aside from the pointy teeth and the blue butterfly wings, I pretty much had carte blanche when it came to this design. So if you're watching this Adelina, I really hope you approve of my vision. I wanted Song to have a distinct silhouette, so I gave her a kind of double Bride of Frankenstein hairdo, and some pointy shoes. While I was drawing the wings, I realised it might be fun to add an allusion to her name, and incorporated a clef-shaped pattern on each wing, which I'm really happy with. So, here we have the full Haunted House Party. They'll probably come up with another name the next time we play, but I just really like the sound of it. An absolute joy to play with, and to draw. Thank you again, Corey, Thimble and Adelina, for helping bring Stravagante to life. And thank you very much for watching! I'd like to extend a warm welcome to any recent new subscribers and a big thank you to the fantastic JP Kuvert for his lovely review of Stravagante over on his channel, link in the description. 
If you're interested in keeping up with my art and projects, you can subscribe to my free newsletter, The Penflower Post. You can support my work via my web store, itch.io or Patreon. Until next time, bye bye!